This episode is powered by Poddex. Poddex are unique interview questions and episode starting prompts in the palm of your hand. So whether you are a new podcaster or existing broadcaster looking to grow your audience or get more engagement, you're going to want to check out poddex.com. Use code CINEMAGOLD for 10% off your first order. Welcome to the Cinema Gold Podcast with your host, Larry Lease. Come join us as Cinema Gold dives into the latest Hollywood films and news. Hello, listeners, and welcome to another episode of the Cinema Gold Podcast. Today we're diving into the news that AMC will live to fight another day amid the ongoing pandemic. As always, remember you can become a part of this show by sending us a voice message by calling 682-305-0483. And when you do send us a message, you can remain anonymous if you'd like. Despite an ongoing pandemic and films continuing to be pushed back, AMC has managed to raise $1 billion in funding since December, allowing them to continue operating and avoiding bankruptcy for at least a few months more. The announcement comes just days after several major studios, including Paramount, Sony, and Disney's Fox, all delayed many of their films to the latter half of the year. According to public SEC documents from AMC, AMC managed to raise $917 million and another $411 million in debt, but is paid, said to be paid off by 2023. AMC CEO Adam Aron, hopefully I can say that right, issued a press release saying that any talks of imminent bankruptcy are now completely off the table. However, studio is looking to hit the magical $1 billion at the box office again, which we haven't seen for a very long time since before the pandemic. Likely see no upside to releasing movies in a market where theaters are either entirely closed or operating at a limited capacity. AMC currently has 438 of its near 600 theaters in the U.S. open as of four days ago, according to public documents. Theaters that remain closed, however, exist in some of the country's most important major markets, including New York City and Los Angeles. As such, AMC theaters had reported an overall attendance decline of 92% compared to 2019. Other films that studios are less positive will come with a guaranteed return on investment are being sold off. Netflix just acquired what was once known as Connected and now becomes The Mitchells vs. The Machines, directed by Phil Lord and Chris Miller from Sony. While the theater chains and studios struggle to figure out when they can start ushering people into theater seats to watch films, Streamers like Netflix continue to thrive as people try to find new things to watch while being forced to remain home. Cities across Europe also have enforced even heavier lockdowns as COVID cases continue to rise, meaning that trips to the movies are not happening anytime soon. Key markets in the U.S., including L.A. and New York, continue to keep theaters closed. However, it's possible if more people are vaccinated by summer, things could change, but It's doubtful. I don't see us going back to normal until at least a year from now. And now we're going to take a short break. And our other main topic today is the big news that NBC Peacock has acquired WWE Network. NBC Peacock continues to offer a good amount of entertaining content, and now they can continue to build up their library by becoming the exclusive U.S. home for the WWE Network. And if you don't know what the WWE is, it's World Wrestling Entertainment. NBC has steadily built out its library of content and introduced different payment levels to appeal to a broad range of potential users. A big part of that appeal has been exclusive rights to properties like The Office, Parks and Recreation, and now WWE. While I'm not personally a wrestling fan, this is big news for those who are wrestling fans in the U.S., and they'll pretty much gain access to the content for a half-off discount while also having access to the rest of Peacock's library. And they have announced that Fastlane will be the first pay-per-view event to stream on Peacock on March 21st. It will also begin rolling out a signature documentary annually beginning next year. The WWE has been the biggest name in professional wrestling for decades. While it might not have the same appeal as it had in the 80s or 90s, 
It still has a massive fan base that flocks to its weekly shows, its pay-per-views, and the original content that's been offered on the WWE Network. In 2014, the WWE Network was launched, which is their 24-7 channel. And a year later, it acquired over a million subscribers. While WWE and The Office may not seem similar, they serve a similar purpose at Peacock. Disney and HBO have built followings off of massive franchises like Star Wars, Marvel, and DC. NBC appears to be following that blueprint in their own way. The Office and WWE are definitely worlds apart from a sci-fi franchise like Star Wars. They both have loyal and expansive fan bases. The WWE Network did well when it was an independent entity, and it should be a great way for NBC to gather more viewers to Peacock. This new deal could also impact AEW's ratings as they continue to outperform WWE. Thank you for listening to the Cinema Gold Podcast. Share your thoughts with us on Twitter at Cinema Gold 2. Like us on Facebook at Cinema Gold Movies. Subscribe and give us a review on Apple Podcasts. Join us tomorrow for an all-new episode of the Cinema Gold Podcast. As always, have a great day. Thank you for listening to the Cinema Gold Podcast. If you want to become a supporter, you can buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash cinemagold. Follow us on Twitter at cinemagold2 and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash cinemagoldmovies. Movies.